So this, my friends, is my chicken nugget AirPod case. I'm telling all our friends about my AirPod case. I see. Oh. Hey, I'm Nate. This is Nate. I can hear you. Yeah, I know. But you're supposed to do a... Uh... And I'm Rach. There you go. <laughs> We're killing it. This is pew pew time. Pew pew. What's happening? Mom's going to reset the router. Oh, mom's going to reset the router. Mom's going to reset the router, later. guys. So don't worry yeah. about it. Today, we are uh, actually in the same building, which is exciting and fun, but we don't have the gear to actually record in the same room, so we got to sit separately and whatever. So uh, jumping right in, tonight we're talking about Ahsoka Episode 7, which is titled Dreams and Madness. It's actually, uh, I, f I had forgotten, it's actually a line of Balin's from, I think, Episode 3. Or not Episode 3, Episode 6, maybe. I don't remember, but it was, he was talking about this like planet is like a land of dreams and madness. And he's talking about it, I don't know, whatever, but Rach, why don't you hit mm -hmm. the, uh, hit the recap and we'll jump right in. Hit the highlights. All right. Sure. Um, so in this, we see, uh, Hera getting told, you know, the business from the senators <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I appreciate that she doesn't really back down. But anyway, uh, we have a lovely visit from C-3PO who clears her uh, thanks to Senator Organa. Uh, the, the Leia Organa, I should clarify. And then as we continue, we find Ahsoka and she is practicing um, some lightsaber dueling and listening to Anakin, some kind of hologram type uh, training videos of some kind. Um, they are still in hyperspace, but Huyang, Huyang says they're headed toward, you know, whatever, getting to their destination, whatever that should be. We then jump to uh, Morgan Elsbeth, and she and uh, Thrawn are still kind of progressing in the process um, they're almost done with everything. They're going to attack, you know, whatever is about to come out of hyperspace. Um, Balin and Shin, we see them out and about. They have tracked down, um, Ezra and Sabine and they're going to kill them. That is the plan. Uh, as we kind of get into it, Shin actually goes off to attack Ezra and Sabine and Balin goes off. Um, kind of on his own. We don't really know where. A little bit later, we see him <clears throat> um, fighting Ahsoka. So uh, Ahsoka and Huyang come into the area, get attacked. The whales take off. They end up down on the planet. Thrawn is kind of acting real... Um, what's the word? Low-key about it all. And we come to find out a little bit later that he is kind of feeling like all we need is to distract them until we can get everything done we need to. So Ahsoka and Huyang make it to the planet. Ahsoka meets up with Ezra and Sabine. Obviously, there was some battles that ensue. We'll talk more about those. Um, but there is a lovely reunion that we encounter. And then it kind of wraps up with a, a big question mark of what's about to happen next. So Shin and Balin are separated at the end. And um, I think that and that covers it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of where yeah, we yeah. end. We do see some stormtroopers too in there some somewhere. So <laughs> Yeah. They're kind of in a couple different so, places. So, so yeah. jumping right in, right? You mentioned mm -hmm. uh C three PO and this whole scene with uh mm -hmm. with this like she's on trial and uh, in front of yeah. uh, a portion of the of the New Republic Senate. And right. um I don't know. It was, uh, it's, it's, it's clear still that Mon Mothma is very much like on the same side as, as Hera. Like there's a certain right. like doubt in her from uh, Senator uh, Ziono mm -hmm. who, you know, like we know he's a dirt bag. Like, you know, he, right. in, the, in the last That's couple obvious. of things that we've seen, like he's very, very uh, <sighs> against, I guess, Hera. And it's, it's been obvious from the start and, uh, he, you know, he's the guy that we had the whole scene with where she said, like, did you, uh, fight in the war? 
like like uh, mm-hmm. what side were you on kind of thing i mean and yeah. like very much mm-hmm. pointed out the fact that like he's just kind of sat back to see who would win right uh now right. you know we talked i think in the last episode that like i think he's got ulterior motives like i think that he might right. be you know working with the bad guys essentially. working like, for the I, other my suspicion yeah. is Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we know that the the New Republic takes a dive here at some point, you know, and we know that Leia is is going to break off sort of to create this resistance that comes about in the sequel mm-hmm. trilogy. Um, right. So it's it's like something has to happen here. And it feels like at the end of Return of the Jedi, you know, uh, you have all these heroes, all these like war heroes and these good people who try to step in to start this New Republic. Mm-hmm. And it's like, where did it all go wrong? Well, how did it fail? Whatever. And how could the uh, how could the first order have risen in the midst of this? And more and more, mm-hmm. I think you know Disney, uh, Dave, John, um, you know my best friends. I think they're all the friends trying yeah. to bridge that gap, right? You know, Dave, Dave, and John. Um, mm-hmm. Occasionally, Freddie's in there too. Um, sure, sure. That's uh, Prince Prince Junior. For those of you who aren't <laughs> uh, close personal friends, uh, right, anyway. But they. Um, I think they're really trying hard to, to, to make these things connect. And, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I myself was very much like, so wait, what happened? Like all of my favorite characters just kind of stopped paying attention and evil rose back yeah. into the world. Like they just didn't feel right. right. So, yeah. um, I, I, in a way, this I suppose makes it I'm, more I appreciate natural that they're or like, they're a more possible yeah, transition. Yeah, they're making that make I a mean, little more sense. it makes it sense. seem more realistic. But again, yeah. yeah, you know, they've also hinted that like, there are agents of the former empire very much still active in, in the new Republic, you know, whether right. they're working, trying to be good for the new Republic or trying to work against it, you know, they can't operate the new Republic without former Imperial officers and stuff. So guys like the right. Senator, I wonder where his allegiance really lies, you know? So I wonder sure. if he's actively yeah. working against her, working against, you know, our heroes mm-hmm. and everything. So, there's sure. that. And there was the really lovely C-3PO cameo, which I think that was a really good way to do it. You know, mm-hmm. it was really tasteful. And it's, it it's you know, since mm-hmm. uh, Carrie Fisher's um, unfortunate passing, it's been difficult to yeah. try to find ways to work her into things. You know, obviously in The Last Jedi, they had to mm-hmm. reuse some old footage and they had to do a little bit of, I think, some, you know, like CGI mm-hmm. stuff and whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But uh this feels much like it feels appropriate because like they're still you know they're hinting at what the character is doing and what's happening and everything without like Mm -hmm. you know sort of you know pasting her her face on a you know digital puppet or something like that so right for um, sure but it was also really good and it was nice and it was you know hearing anthony daniels again like it it's nice it brings Mm -hmm. a warm a warm feeling to my heart to hear any of our old um you know star wars veterans come back oh always Um, for sure yeah but uh uh what's his name the senator ziono he uh he says something about like we yeah. can't trust the testimony of a mere droid <laughs> and mm-hmm. chopper loses his mind yeah. that was so funny oh, chopper's back there like ready to, ready to go kill yeah. this guy oh uh, <laughs> um that's great yeah um you uh you brought up the ahsoka practicing scene you know and she we've said it before she's she's mm-hmm. a different animal now like this ahsoka the white thing that we've joked mm-hmm. about you can tell that like she's yeah. focused she's like you know she's at peace a little more and mm-hmm. she's not like you can tell that she she remembers her fondness for anakin you know i mean that he wasn't all evil right. and that sort of thing that like that's exactly what i was gonna say it was, it's, she's it's, recognized yeah sorry she's recognized that like I'll go for it Anakin taught a lot, taught her a lot of good things that what he became Mm -hmm. wasn't like, didn't define him as a master and like what he taught her. And and I think that revelation for her has definitely shifted her complete demeanor of this feeling of being a Jedi. Like she was so almost embarrassed of it and like ashamed of it. And now she's more embracing whether she calls it Jedi or not, whatever. But she even like talks about what a good master he was in that moment, you know? So yeah, I right. like that. And I'd love to see w- what it is she thinks she is now. You know what I mean, does she start to consider herself a Jedi again? You know, like right. I, I wonder about that sort of thing. Like, where does she see herself mm-hmm. on this spectrum from yeah. 
nothing to Jedi to whatever, you know, does she start to consider herself a Jedi again? Right. She's tried so hard to distance mm-hmm. herself from that identity because she felt like the council was wrong and the Jedi's part in this war was wrong right. and all that kind of thing. So it, I think it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I, mean, I don't know if she'll ever actually say anything, but we've certainly seen a change in her, a piece in her about this, a sort of, you know, she's, she's, um, sort of resolved, um, some of this conflict within herself. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. For sure. <clears throat> but while she's practicing there, we do get another glimpse and we saw in there earlier in a previous episode, I don't remember exactly when, but we saw that she's got some old lightsabers hanging in a closet in her little training mm-hmm. space on the ship. Right. And I've got a, a, a note. I want to hit on that when we get to the end of the episode with a theory. Um, but uh, yeah. I wonder, first of all, whose they are. Uh, I didn't go digging through mm-hmm. to try to find whose they were. I didn't recognize them right off the bat. Um, but I have always, I, I've been assuming right. that they're lightsabers of fallen Jedi friends and whoever that she's connected with maybe sure. over time. Um, she's got a bunch sense. of like, yeah. practice remotes, like, like Luke battled in, uh, you know, episode four and everything in his early lightsaber mm-hmm. training and everything. Um, so that was a fun little detail. Yeah. Um, and hopefully that pays off, but maybe it's not, maybe it's just a cool background thing. Um, implying some story beyond what they're going to tell us, but they come out of sure. you know hyperspace into this uh, minefield left for the Pergil, which was mm-hmm. you know I mean Pete is going to hear about this right, um, but they're <laughs> exactly. uh, just a bunch of bombs left in space for uh, for the Pergil to run into, and like man, I feel kind of mm-hmm. bad. It's like you know, hey, thanks for the ride, guys. You know, and they they take off and they start you know right. dodging this and that whatever, and then the Pergil take off yeah. and i was like yeah where are they going like i wonder like because it didn't look like they turned around and went straight back to where they came from mm-hmm. so it's going to the I next mean, galaxy like, we don't know how many yeah. of these yeah we don't know how many hyperspace routes there are we don't know if this yeah. is just like well they brought us to the other galaxy and now they're off to another planet mm-hmm. or another system in the galaxy yeah. we don't know but i also I thought that was actually i really love the idea that or i loved the the picture that we saw of this minefield doing absolutely nothing to the purple i don't know if you noticed that but it didn't look like any of them like were getting bleeding. even remotely damaged or injured. No. I mean, it just like the explosions I mean, like clearly, would hit them, but I didn't see any of like, well, right. Cause they took yeah. off, but it like didn't yeah, I don't, phase them, which I appreciated. So I don't know if it was. Yeah. Right. I don't know how much that was, that was, uh, intended to be them, um, being impervious or if it was maybe, Disney just didn't want to show a bunch of whales exploding into guts up in space. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I suppose. But who knows? Who knows what was going on there? Um, yeah. You know, they, uh, she like dips and dives and it switches back to uh, Morgan talking to Thrawn. And uh, mm-hmm. it was really, again, it's, <laughs> it's fascinating to see Thrawn uh, kind of being Thrawn again. Right. And Morgan Elizabeth, right. who's been this kind of like, the sort of like BA, like I'm large and in charge sort of personality. And mm-hmm. like, you're going to do what I say. And she gets up there with Thrawn and like, she knows yeah. that she's the small fish now. I mean, she's small. She, yeah. She's, she's in a, in a, yeah, she's the small fish in a, in a, in a much more yeah. dangerous pond, you know? And, yeah. uh, and, and we've seen hints at this even in the previous episode that, you know, mm-hmm. like he's kind of like, well, we don't have the resources for that, whatever. But it's like, he's as kindly and patiently saying, no, you're wrong. And I'm going to yeah. show you, you know? Right. <clears throat> and um, it's that stoic like, kind I, of calm know, sure. power. That's like the most terrifying, yeah. you know, it's that kind of well, this like confidence, his peaceful this nature confidence and is, politeness. Yeah. 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 It's kind of it, it's like extra he, intimidating he, or something. He knows, right. He knows that like, he knows more than you. And there's a certain, there's, there's right. a certain like almost slap in the face with his politeness that it's like, I'm not threatened at all mm-hmm. by you because you're nothing. To right. Me. You exactly. know what I mean? Like there's, there's the sort of yeah. confidence right. that, that shows that like, I'm, I'm smarter than you and, and we both know it, you know? Right. Um, but anyway, mm-hmm. um, there's the, there's the scene. I think this is right when it happens, when, uh, she brings him the information about, uh, about, um, Ahsoka and like who she is as a Jedi and everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm a little surprised that she, that he didn't know this. It feels unlike Thrawn to not know this. And I kind of even would have guessed that probably they had known of each other a little bit, you know, I I don't know. 
Um, you know, obviously Ahsoka. Like I don't that. know where Thrawn was before the rise of the Empire. I'm not familiar terribly with with the books and the you know um, the ex- yeah. uh, expanded universe stuff or whatever. Um, so I, I, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but I was surprised that he didn't know. But when he finds out that Ahsoka is Anakin's Padawan, he's like, like you can see, he's like, okay, uh, we need to change tactics mm-hmm. here. And somewhere in there, he also yeah. makes the comment that like our number one priority is getting out of this, you know, like horrible place. Yep. Like he, it's there's yeah. this like we don't have to we don't have to win some big fight with them. We just have to get out of here. Like mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. it was interesting that you know his his assessment of yeah. the situation, his control over the situation slips a bit when he finds out that Ahsoka is Anakin's yeah. Padawan, who Anakin was known as this right this uh, hard to predict strategist uh and you know relatively mm-hmm. bold and uh powerful and intelligent you know leader and everything so right. it was it was right. an interesting thing to see Thrawn take that in and suddenly be like okay well uh maybe we'll suffer some losses here you know mm-hmm. um yeah yeah my next note which was just sort of a, a side note thing was are there only three witches left on this entire mm. planet that's something i'm curious yeah. about because we've just seen the three what they're calling great mothers we know that the 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 witches the um night sisters of dathomir came from here now we know that mm-hmm. to some degree right this is their ancestral right. home right but i mean like did all of the witches except for these three leave and go to the right. other galaxy at some point or yeah have they all been wiped out question. or have we just not seen them are they all in the castle downstairs kind of, in the basement right you know? they so, might just be spread out right maybe that's part of it yeah maybe they are part of what's being yeah. transported or it's, you know at, another thing that we had kind of talked about is what if you know they're I, well i had kind of thought maybe they're dispersed like the jedi after the council was you know after everything kind of broke down the jedi all dispersed so is this the same kind of thing when this yeah you know kingdom fell did the witches all disperse i mean who knows but yeah it's a good question yeah it's hard to know it really it's hard to know and i don't know what caused their downfall here, right? If there indeed there was a downfall, you know, some great battle, some power again, yeah. which hint, hint, maybe that's what Balin's looking for, right? Um, but the fact that right. there are only three, sure. we've only seen the three to me is sort of telling. And, you know, maybe mm-hmm. they're just the leaders. Maybe there are some, you know, just off camera. <laughs> I sure. don't know. But like, it feels like right. they're really trying yeah. to tell us like, these are the last three. And I find that very interesting. And I don't know, again, there are a lot of pieces of the puzzle we don't have yet. So. Right. It'd be interesting to find out. Um, there was a line, yeah, for sure. I think Hu Yang says it when they're when they're zipping in and out of the of the whale bones in the you know the, whatever the ring around the planet. Where Hu Yang says we're going to get pulverized if we see out here much longer, and that's like almost a direct quote yeah. I think from Leia in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, me, I thought that was great. Yeah. That's I really love those close. Little, those it, little moments, uh, as long as it cool. fits. Fun little. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, it was, um, I don't know. It was crazy starting to see, you know, finally these pieces are starting to fall into place of, you know, like uh, the major players taking their place on the battlefield a little bit and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, uh, Thrawn yeah. then says, you know, like, kill Sabine Wren and Ezra Bridger. Yeah. Oh no! Sorry, that's not Thrawn. Mm-hmm. Sorry, sorry, sorry. He has sent them out in the that's last Balin. episode. Yeah, uh, they're already assuming out. Assuming that Balin mm-hmm. and Shin yeah. were going to go kill, uh, you know, Sabine and Ezra, right? Well, halfway mm-hmm. out there, uh, Balin stops, or I don't know, not halfway, a little ways out there, he stops mm-hmm. with with uh, Shin. Mm-hmm. Says like, "All right, go kill the two of them, then take your place in the coming empire." Which, what does that mean? You know what I mean, like. How does that help? Yeah. How does that help this like right. this clearly lost young woman who doesn't know what's happening? It's like I felt right. so bad for her. And like no. I don't know. Oh my I gosh, don't know it's how abundantly she came to be clear. In service, She's completely but... oblivious. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's yeah, oh, yeah. It's kind oblivious of sad. to what's happening. Feel, she, feel like, bad he, hasn't, for her. he hasn't told her. Right. And right. uh, you know, more and more, and I, other people are saying this is not just my theory, but more and more, you're starting to see she wants to belong, man. Like you can see this, mm-hmm. like this, like longing, this like sadness that like you're not yeah. gonna help, like you're not coming, like you want me to go down there and do this myself, <laughs> right? Uh, so, so yeah, there are a couple right. things going on there. There's, I mean, she has him so much curiosity. She has so much curiosity some... about the Jedi Council, 
in the in the past, you know, yeah. like she asked so many questions about like the Jedi order and everything and the way it functioned. And you can tell that her desire really maybe is toward being a Jedi and this is how she's been taught. But then yeah. he's trying to be like, no, 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 no. Like you're, you're doing this for yourself, but she's learning like how to be a Jedi. And so it's, she's like torn between these two, like or something, wait, you're telling me to live for myself, but I want to belong. Like you said, I want to, I want to have or live yeah. for power or something. And she's like, but I want to do something that is meaningful almost or something. It's, it's, she doesn't say much, but she says yeah. a lot with her crazy eyes. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, well, it, it makes you start to wonder yeah. why she's been failing, following Balin all this time. Has it been because she believes in yeah. whatever Balin believes in? Which, to be honest, we don't know what he believes in. Like, he's been really cryptic right. about it. He's right. He's a mercenary. They've been out for themselves. Yeah. He's talked about, you know, the great power they'll achieve and everything. <clears throat> but now they get here, and he's like, all right, well, your sure. destiny's that way, and I'm going this way, or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. She says, you won't help. And yeah. he says, your ambition leads you in one direction. My path is in another. And it's like... Okay, yeah. thanks for nothing. Like I was just shocked. I was. I mean, I guess I right. don't know. You know, he's just. Does he know? Sort of like, do you think Jedi he knows character. that she's headed for? Do you think there's a chance that he's aware know. that she is maybe. going maybe, toward? Maybe he's dropping you know? her off, like in front of the fire department or whatever, hoping that someone will adopt her. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it, it's an odd. It's an odd situation. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. like where that's gonna go. But she, you know trying to, yeah. to do her best. Like you know, I said, like note her disappointment, right. abandoned and alone. Right. But despite that, she heads on down there, mm -hmm. you know, to face um, Ezra and Sabine. Um, and right about mm -hmm. then the, uh, the stormtroopers come too, right? Mm -hmm. Shortly. Yeah. She kind of arrives and then they're like right behind her because first she comes yeah, in with yeah. the, natives or whatever they whatever we're calling them the people who are on the planet oh right and they get the, wiped uh, out the bandits the yeah show up yeah bandits whatever right. yeah right so it jumps away from that scene to balin and ahsoka man oh so this is there's another cool mm -hmm. there are a lot of cool little things happening that like you know we don't need to dig into too much <laughs> but again i love seeing ahsoka back to who we feel like she's meant to be who she really is you know this sort of hopeful yeah. you know bright almost cheery personality uh and she has hu yang yeah. fly around and like drop her off basically and she gets up there to balin and and there's right. this weird like uh like he said like oh i didn't expect to see you again and she's like disappointed he's like no or whatever he's like but mm -hmm. like i can't let you slow me yeah. down so it was again even right. now he's like really wish i didn't have to kill you you know like he still has this weird <laughs> sentimentality or, or whatever it is. I yeah. don't know. Uh, kind of attachment but, um, or respect, appreciation, yeah, something. For yeah, her. respect. Yeah. Uh, you know, some sort of, some part of him misses the old days or misses, you know, connection right. to, to, I wouldn't say like-minded, but similar people to himself, you right. know, people of a sure. sort of higher cause yeah. and that sort of thing. But um, yeah. anyway... <laughs> Uh, there's some really cool like samurai poses and stuff like that before the fight. And uh, again, we're seeing the change in Sabine. She doesn't draw first, remember, because Jedi use the force for yeah. attack or for, uh, for uh, mm -hmm. what did I say? Defense. Knowledge and defense, never attack. Right. That was, that was what Yoda said. Yeah. <laughs> so um, right. he yeah. draws on her and she, you know, she draws then to protect herself and, um, She's back in her element. She's acting like a Jedi again. She's at peace. Like the whole, her, yeah. Well, you said her demeanor's changed since their first right. encounter. And, oh, you said since her encounter meeting Anakin, right? Right. That's really where all of it shifted was that point. Well, like we yeah. talked about, she suddenly realized that she didn't have anything to be afraid of in that, that she was not the same person that Anakin became and all of that. And I think that was just a big point yeah. for her to kind of chill out about it all sort of, I mean, she just kind yeah. of was like, Oh, well, honestly, okay. Like a little more we, centered or we something. Talked, yeah. We talked so, we talked so much about it already, but like, I feel like you could do a whole episode on Sabine's uh, situation and her, and her trouble. And, you know, we, we noticed it from the start, but we didn't realize what it was. You know, we, we saw, we've seen it in her and all of this, right. like 
the sort of shame of the Jedi and that sort of thing, but there was something else mixed in and it was fear, mm -hmm. right? In episode one, yeah. uh, Yoda talks, he says, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads mm -hmm. to suffering, right? And like, it's one of the mm -hmm. earliest things that we hear when he's talking about, when, when they're like testing Anakin to see if he's going to be a Jedi, little baby Anakin. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, she's been holding on to this fear that, you know, she learned from mm -hmm. Anakin and he was the best in her yeah. mind. And so she's like, am I going to be that? You yeah. know, she had this fear that like all he taught her was, was sure. evil now. And so she came out of that and right. now it's like, you can see her unburdened and so ready to go back into a, mm -hmm. a match with Balin yeah. and she's not aggressive in the same way. She's not like, you know, yeah. prowling around him like she was before. It's much more at peace. It's much more like, right. whatever. I, it was great. I thought it was really good. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And then who Yang flies around in the, in the Jedi transport and mm -hmm. takes a few shots at, uh, at the two of them. And as the dust clears, mm -hmm. Balin looks up and, uh, Ahsoka mm -hmm. stole his ride. It was, it was hilarious to me. I was like, Oh, yep. oh all right. See you later. It was fantastic. And he almost, I feel and like so he almost looks moment. like annoyed, but like, Oh, Good move. Like yeah. it's kind of this, like, all right, well, yeah. you beat me, you know. Like again, there's a certain, yeah. there's a certain piece to him too, but it's not the same thing. It's like there's a certain, like, mm -hmm. ah, no. all right. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I, he turns and looks in one way, and then he looks in the other, and then he starts walking, and I'm still not sure mm -hmm. now where he was walking. Is he continuing on his path then, or is he going to try and get his holler right. back, or is he? I mean, I mean, like. Because I assume that there's a timeline right. on whatever weird thing he's got planned to do too. So maybe he needs to move faster. You know, I don't know. But it was interesting. Yeah. And it was a it was an interesting play that like she wasn't there to kill him. She might have just been there to slow him down, mm -hmm. you know, to go and get the to get the howler and take off. Sure. Again, I want to say this. Those howlers, yeah. those horse dogs are one of my favorite new things in, in Star Wars. Just get that clear. Yeah. <clears throat> I still can't see um, anything but a slightly larger ROUS from yeah. Princess they do. Bride. They that's look a little like that's like okay a giant too. I like that sort too, of. So. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway, yeah. So then uh, we finally come back, and it's Ezra and Sabine against um, mm -hmm. you know these uh, the, well the stormtroopers. Sorry, not the stormtroopers. The uh, the bandits and bandits. stuff like they attack mm -hmm. when they're still on their on their little pods, right? And they take a few shots at him and, yeah. and they manage to hit one of the, one of the pods in the side. And so it crashes. And so they all just circle up like a, you know, wagon train situation from the, you know, old west. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, um, this, um, little defensive position, they all tuck in and everything. And, um, you know, uh, Sabine and uh, Ezra get out and they're, and they're shooting and whatever, taking some of these guys out. Uh, but that's when Shin arrives, right? She comes walking in. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, there's this debate or something between, uh, Ezra and Sabine about the use of the lightsaber. I thought that was really cool. Really fun. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to take that? For sure. I think it was that whole, that whole moment was funny. Actually, I thought, cause he goes friend of yours, you know, cause he sees Shin on her little creature and, and she goes, mm. well, she's like you, but you know, with not so good a sense of humor or something like that. And, and that moment yeah. of like, I think I mean, we kind of talked about this, you and I did, but like the thing with the lightsaber, it kind of annoyed me. I'm okay with it. Like I'm sure there was a reason really that we wanted to, you know, but it would make more sense because, you know, Sabine had her blaster and all of her Mandalorian weapons why wouldn't he have taken the lightsaber and used that as well? Now, she does pull it out and use it a little bit later, and that's great. But I was annoyed by that. I understood why he, I mean, he's trying to also push her to, I think, toward that and be, you know, mm. uh, whatever. But it's it just was kind of like, oh my gosh, Ezra, just take the lightsaber and use it so that we can both be fighting well, you know? It just, I mean, although he did yeah. a good job with you know, his force pushes and stuff. He was pretty impressive with all of that, but you know, yeah. 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 I, well, it, it, yeah, I, I, I agree to an extent. Like it's kind of like she offers it to him. He's like, Oh no, uh, keep it. You know, like that's for you, whatever. 
And there's a sort of back and forth and it's yeah. a little hard to tell what's going on there. Cause it's almost like he doesn't want it. You know, it's almost like I right. like, like he does, he's not right. confident with it or something anymore, which doesn't seem like that could be true. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I did I wonder that if yes. maybe he was uncomfortable with it because he hasn't used one in so long. He was like afraid. Of, yeah. But then it it's be. clear he's been using the force. It's clear he's been practicing. So who knows? But anyway. Well, I almost wondered if he'd have a new lightsaber when she arrived. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, obviously kyber crystals are not oh, like everywhere, sure. but who knows, you know? Um, I thought it'd be cool if he yeah. had, you know, something like that already. Um, even if he had like, you know, yeah. a really nice stick, like a rod that he's been using or something like that, just, you know, but, um, right. I also think it, it, it's crossed my mind. My guess is part of it was he thinks that she's kind of a Jedi now. So he's like, yeah, like you use it. Like I'll be good with the force. You use the lightsaber and we'll right. just totally like destroy them, you know? Um, but he doesn't maybe realize mm -hmm how much she struggled with, you know, the force and some of that kind of thing and how, how much mm -hmm. of a failure she feels like as a Jedi. So who knows? Right. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, there are these, there, there are a couple of really cool shots where, uh, Shin swipes at, uh, at, uh, mm -hmm. um, Ezra, you know, and like, right. catches a little mm -hmm. of his hair and he goes like, Oh, that was close mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, but he's like, <laughs> yeah. it was fun. Cause he's the playful, like a little bit cocky, like whatever, you know, yeah. kid that he kind of always was. And at one yeah, point she swings sure. at him and he just goes, Poof! and like, you can see like mm -hmm. the lights, they were like, you can see the light, like being pushed back. I thought that was a really cool yeah. effect, you know, it was really cool. Yeah. I will say, I will say one thing I wished, like when he uses the force push thing on, you know, soldiers mm -hmm. or whoever here and there, there are times when the force push like sends people flying. In um, mm -hmm. in the newer movies and everything, you see people go flying from like blast from a from a blaster, you know, like it sends them flying. And like he's using the force on them, like mm -hmm. he's a fairly powerful force user by now, I imagine. And like yeah. they're just kind of like oh, and they sort of stumble away. I felt like it was a little underplayed, you know. I felt like he he really mm -hmm. could have been sending yeah. those guys, but especially yeah. considering then at some point uh, Shin pushes him and he goes flying across into the thing. So like mm -hmm. maybe he was just going easy on him. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but right. um, all that is to say he holds his own. All right. And then Ahsoka mm -hmm. shows up <laughs> and like, yeah, she has this look, man. It was like, I, I wish I could describe it better, but it was this, like this pure confidence. It was like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like a big brother showing up, to, to look right. at the bully who's been messing with his, his well, little, and, you know, siblings or whatever. Right. <laughs> well, in this, in this moment we saw Ezra and Sabine were both like, he was, he was ready to like give up because the, the stormtroopers had yeah. him surrounded at that point. Like that's when the stormtroopers had, had shown up and suddenly Ezra was like, wait, don't you want to take us captive? Like you can, we can be your prisoners. Like he's trying to like buy their, you know, yeah. captivity versus their death. And that's when all of a sudden right. Ahsoka like blasts her, you know, force pushes her way through yeah. oh, a bunch yeah. of stormtroopers and you're like, oh, that. and then she walks in and it's like, yeah, then it's like, okay, now the party's here. And that was There's like a There's this moment, moment where she looks at, she looks at yeah. Shin and she's like, hey, what you doing? Like, there's mm -hmm. this like, this like mm -hmm. playful, like, like show of power, like, yeah. mm, you know, like. I'm here to, 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 you know, take you down a notch, whatever it was. It was cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also, that you mentioned that moment where Ezra was like, yeah, uh, maybe we give up. How about that? Like, why don't you take us to prison or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, obviously there's a little play at like, oh, he's, he's just being kind of a coward or something, but there's also this, like, he's escaped from so many prisons, you know, like he, like, like mm -hmm. getting captured and then like escaping is like his thing. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> it it is sort of like almost him. a smart yeah. play maybe that it's like, yeah, uh, right. take us to your Star Destroyer and then we'll break out and then we'll crash mm -hmm. your Star Destroyer or what, you know what I mean? Like right. he, he, exactly. there are a lot of things yeah. that you could do from that position. For sure. But um, yeah. super cool and super fun. Um, mm -hmm. And then we switch back and we're with, um, we're with Thrawn and uh, Morgan Elizabeth again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he's watching this play, which by the way, we, we didn't mention that he said like, Huh? Where is Balin Skull? He's not at the fight, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. again, that reflects poorly on Morgan Elsbeth, 
right? Because she like sort of vouched for this guy and she brought yeah. him along and you she know, did. Thrawn had sort of counted on him. Yeah. And at one point, you know, uh, Balin is the one that said Ahsoka was dead. And she's like, oh, I, Balin said he's dead. And, she, and, mm-hmm. and Thrawn was like, well, he's a Jedi or he was a Jedi once too. So let's just consider him flawed. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And so it's like all mm-hmm. of these things that Thrawn knew are starting to play out and making or- uh, Morgan look yeah. real bad. But he, yeah. <clears throat> watching this fight play out, and he says, like, what a rare sight, almost like the Jedis of old. Mm-hmm. And I love that. That's his, like, his appreciation for someone being very good at what they do, you mm-hmm. know, whether it's an artisan or right. another it's warrior. It's the respect what. for like, ability. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's not, he's not mm-hmm. all hate. He is strategic, you know? Right. He learns from his enemies. He's arrogant and he desires he power, them. but he also can can like swallow his pride to like be like you are right. good at what you do, you know. And that's yeah. right, right. Well, and again, there's a certain there's a certain wisdom to him that a lot of bad guys don't have, which is the sort of like right. my enemies aren't all idiots. Like they're they can be good at things, mm-hmm. and if I pay attention, yeah. I can learn to be good at those things too. You know, I can learn right. from them. I can, <clears throat> I can, uh, yeah. you know, alter my strategy. You know, and that sort of thing. I, anyway, it mm-hmm. was pretty cool. Um, yeah. But then we mentioned the stormtroopers. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. we, along with most uh, people, I think, we had started to believe the stormtroopers were. Yeah. Res- resurrected somehow by the witches. And that seems to have yeah. not been the case unless, you know, maybe there's some mm-hmm. other way that they've done it that we haven't heard about. I doubt it. <clears throat> they didn't explode into green yeah. gas in the way that uh, Marak, Marak, right. the, you know, inquisitor, mm-hmm. whoever he was did in one of the earlier episodes right. of the season. So, uh, you know, I guess mm-hmm. they were just regular dudes. Um, you know, they have all these, these red. Yeah. That's um, my guess as well these red things around them and everything like it's possible Mm -hmm. that like they were boosted by the witch magic, you know, that they're like, well, this will, you know, this will help with your arthritis and your elbow. These guys have been soldiers for a long time. Right. Yeah. I mean, like in, in the, you know, in the U S guys aren't soldiers forever. You know, they have some tours of duty or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. but anyway, uh, so it could just be that these are like, you know, this is a spell to make you be faster or stronger or something right. like that. Like it's possible that the witches yeah. have helped in that way. Or you had another theory yeah. about what the what the the cloth meant, right? Yeah. Well, and I think I had mentioned it in an earlier one of our earlier episodes, but when we were talking about the red on them, it's fabric, you know. And so I I immediately thought of the witches. So they wear these red cloaks, and to me that indicates who actually is their authority, sort of. And I don't know what that means as far as Thrawn's relationship with the witches and all of that, but we do know that he relies on them and he asks them for favors. So it's like, who is actually in charge here? I mean, Thrawn mm-hmm. tends to look like the lead of everything, but then he'll be like, you know, great mothers, I need, I need more help from you again. Like, I need to ask for your help again. And so it makes me wonder if really, like you said, maybe some longevity, something has been put into them by the witches, but that they are then owned by the witches sort of and that red fabric is an indicator of what team they're on sort of is what it makes me think of yeah yeah Yeah, it could be you know and the thing is they wouldn't necessarily know that they were under the control you know thrawn wouldn't necessarily know that that these troopers could could be under the control of the witches or whatever who who knows how that's going to play out you know um It really, like, I mean, my gut says at this point, like, it was just kind of like patching him up a little bit or something like that, but it could be something more yeah. sinister. And I've told be. you from the start, I have yeah. been more suspicious of these, uh, these, uh, the death Miri, um, than most mm-hmm. people. Like, I, I wonder if their whole plan is to come back, but then, you know, to turn on Thrawn or something like that, you know, but oh, the truth is 100%. knowing yeah. Thrawn. If that's what they're planning, he, knows he that might too. already yeah. be planning to counter it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's just... Absolutely. You know, he would already uh, be aware of that. He's the, not that naive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's like the brilliant strategist. So it's kind of like to assume mm-hmm. that you're a step ahead of him means you're probably three steps behind or whatever. Yeah. Right. So... Right. Exactly. So we go back. Yeah. We go back and we're with the others fighting again. So Shin and Sabine and... Um, and this... And, this is uh, one of my favorite moments of the whole episode, Ezra, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ahsoka's there. They've taken out all the other dudes. Um, 
uh, mm-hmm. Thrawn, uh, having seen the battle going so poorly for his guys, is like, well, these losses are acceptable or whatever, you know, in a in a very Thrawn way. You know, he says that mm-hmm. kind of thing all the time in the uh, Clone Wars. Well, and know? he also kind but of he, throws he Elspeth under the bus because he goes, he goes mm. like with with Balin not there. You know, it's this like considering the loss, well, of, yeah, you know. Considering the loss of Balin's whatever, that it's like, yeah. and you see Morgan kind of be like, oh, like it's that kind of little Ooh, sta- yeah. you know, jab at her again, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, her, uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, all of her, you know, her level of uh, whatever um, value in Thrawn's mind is being altered each time mm-hmm. that one of these things is sort of her fault, you know. But it's interesting to me, they don't know what he's doing either. They're like, where'd he go? You know? Mm -hmm. So like, right. He's off on this errand of his own that like Shin didn't know about, you know, and the witches don't seem to, or at least haven't let on that they know about, you know, like if he's going for some powerful artifact or to unlock the end of the force or the Jedi or something like that, you know, like it seems like they would know that's on this planet, you know, but who knows? You know, he's, he's one yeah, of really think. only who two knows? people who grew up as a Jedi in this whole group of people that are on this planet. Right. Because Shin and Ezra, who yeah. both sort of have some Jedi training, didn't grow up in the, you know, in the Jedi temple. So, uh, Ahsoka the and Balin yeah. are the only ones that may know some ancient, you know, Hu Yang, you know, would hopefully know, but right. like some piece of ancient well, you know, Jedi knowledge yeah. of something that's here. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But Shin is then offered a choice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Shin, uh, you know, really clearly struggles. And uh, I, can't, I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. You know, some of this is you see what you want to see. But she just looks like she just wants to be yeah. part of a family. You know, like she just wants to be. Yeah. Uh, I love you know, the way Ahsoka to be. offers her. I love yeah. the way she like. Yeah, well. You know, just kind of opens it up. Yeah. It's like Ahsoka, again, being kind of more clear headed and at peace with everything is like, hey, like, yeah, you want to come with us kind of thing? Like, it's just such a, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And I mean, yeah, she stops. I don't remember if it's, it's probably Sabine that's about to like strike at her. And she's like, nope. Or, or maybe it's Ezra. I don't remember which. Um, but she stops him and she's kind of like, you want to come with us? Or whatever. I don't remember exactly what she says. Um, Mm -hmm. and she kind of like pauses and you can feel there's this internal, you know, uh, chaos happening. She can't decide Mm -hmm. what she wants to do, you know, and absolutely. So then she runs off. Right. And, uh, Mm -hmm. it was actually sort of comical the way she just turns and like runs like a little kid runs away, you know, like, okay, bye. And just like takes off. Yeah. But, um, (laughs) right. But Mm -hmm. my question is we, I don't a hundred percent know where she's going. Did she get on one of the transports to go yeah. back to see uh, Thrawn? Or did she run they off left hoping to catch her. up to Balin? They left without her. They were gone? I Look, wasn't 100% the sure. The transports left without her. Yeah. I wasn't 100% sure there. She that, watched that they them, had gotten all the stormtroopers. Yet. Yeah. I am, I am quite certain that as she's turning and looking and the stormtroopers are running off and she's like standing there realizing she's being left alone, that, that mm. the, the, the transports took off. And so she was suddenly like... I got to get out of here. Like, so it must be, it must be, she's running off to Balin. She's hoping that Balin will welcome her back or something like that. But you know, it's hard to know how he'll react. She hasn't finished what he wanted her to finish. And you know, he talks about this, this, your place in this new empire. And it's like, what does that mean? Is Balin going to become ultra powerful? And like, you know, Shin's now going to be in, you know, out of favor with him because she didn't do what he needed right. of her or something. I don't know. It's a, it's a interesting little mystery. Yeah. Again, weird. uh, yeah. weirdly, weirdly, the story has switched around to be sort of the opposite of what I expected, which is I wanted Balin to be the good guy in the end. And now it's looking like Shin is probably going to turn and hopefully see the light at the end of this yeah. thing. Um, be best buddies with the non Jedi Jedis, you know, and, go back and <clears throat> join Luke or something. Um, but then there's this, you know, uh, this really maybe the most genuinely heartwarming thing I've seen. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. I would say the most genuinely heartwarming thing in this series so far, this show, but in almost mm-hmm. any star Wars, I've seen in a long time, the way, um, you know, 
Sabine says, I thought you were dead, you know, to, to, um, Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. And she goes, and she kind of makes his face and he goes, and miss this reunion, you know? And she like leans over and, and she hugs Ezra. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, man, it's so sweet. And like, mm -hmm. so surprisingly believable to yeah. me, the way they missed each other, you know? Yeah. Um, they had sort of a, yeah. I mean, like, you know, uh, Ezra looked up to her. She was a Jedi like, like Kanan was, mm -hmm. you know, she was the, the thing mm -hmm. that he wanted to be. And, you know, she disappeared and like, right. he pulled her into the world between yeah. worlds. Like they have history. They have got like a friendship, you know, mm -hmm. long, long, you know, Absolutely. neglected now because he's been so far away. And it was like, it right. was incredible to me how much that felt like I, I kind of teared up a little bit. I was like, this is, it, it mm -hmm. felt real, you know, it's like, these aren't even the actors, yeah. you know what I mean? Like these are, these aren't right. even the people that <laughs> did this before it was animated. So it was really yeah. well done. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Agreed. Yeah. So here to wrap up the end, I want to discuss uh, something that I want to yes. see happen, but probably won't. Mm -hmm. I, I started this theory um, that, uh, you know, ah Ahsoka has this, this closet with lightsabers, right? And I really wanted her mm -hmm. to have Kanan's lightsaber. Uh, I think we're right. past issuing spoiler alerts, but if you haven't seen Rebels, stop listening now and go watch Rebels. But at the <laughs> end of uh, the last season of Rebels, you go watch all of it right now. Um, at the end of Rebels, yeah. Kanan dies protecting the other members of Phoenix Squadron, right? Of, of his little mm -hmm. team of Rebels. And... Um, Governor Price, who is uh, an imperial, whatever, governor, uh, hands over Kanan's lightsaber mm -hmm. as proof that he's dead uh, to Thrawn at some point or or presents it to him. Yeah. I didn't go back and watch the scene. I had to look it up. Right. I really wanted Ahsoka to have it, mm. but I don't think she could. My mm -hmm. suspicion is that that lightsaber ended up in Thrawn's collection because he has this collection of interesting artifacts and, and artwork and stuff. Like right. he's got... Or at least he had a piece of the wall that um, from Lothal somewhere where Sabine had done some of her like tagging mm. and stuff. So like he's right. got these things yeah. for a while. He had uh, Harris Calicori because like it was this family heirloom and he has this like, Oh, weird, that's right. Weird, interesting respect. That. Well, Kanan stole it back. So he mm -hmm. doesn't still have it. Kanan stole it, gave it to Hera. Yeah. Right. It, I remember. it made its way out. Right. I remember that whole. Yeah. Yeah. So my theory now is that, he has Kanan's lightsaber on his ship, right? Because it was like, you know, shortly yeah. after that, that this last battle went down and the Pergil took uh, the Chimera mm -hmm. and shot across the galaxy Ezra with it, board. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with Ezra right. and Thrawn on board. So my suspicion is, my hope mm -hmm. is that uh, Ezra is going to end up with that lightsaber again. I'm really, really hoping. Yeah. Like almost as much as I want Balin to be. I feel be like a that would guy. be a really that's, elegant that's how much I'm hoping. and exciting, right? <laughs> that's how much. Yeah. It would be really yeah. meaningful for him to end up with it. And it would make perfect yeah. sense, like you said. I mean, he his his yeah. lightsaber is now Sabine's. That's how he feels about it. And Kanan's lightsaber would be, have so much meaning to Ezra, and it would be a great way for him to get a lightsaber again. Right. You know, like it just feels like it would be. Well, yeah, so. I mean. It would be really cool to bring Kanan back into the story a little bit in that sense. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, we know that yeah. that Freddie isn't interested in in reprising the role anymore, so I assume we won't see him as a Force ghost or anything like that. But um, right. like, it would be a cool way for him to get his master's lightsaber after all this time. And mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what his hangup is right. with the lightsaber. Maybe he feels like he's beyond using the weapons. You know, he's been hanging out with these pacifists, so maybe that's part of it. But I kind yeah. of feel like, I kind of feel like a Jedi isn't a Jedi without a lightsaber. You know what I mean, like being powerful in the Force doesn't mean that you right. don't also have a lightsaber. So, I don't know. Uh, I hope that he Absolutely. ends up with one. Yeah. I thought at some yeah. point maybe he'll grab one from Ahsoka's too. ship just to have one, you know, to yeah. fight with in this you know, end of the series here. But who knows? But I do think it'd be really poetic for him to so, end up with Kanan's for sure. Yeah. 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 Well, and uh, we talked about this. I saw something recently that... Apparently, Kanan's lightsaber is coming to uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disney World and Disneyland. So the hope is that that's just a little like wink, like, hey, you know, you can get it yeah. now, too. You know, oh. so I think it'd be cool mm -hmm. for that to come back. Mm -hmm. I really want Ezra to have yes, it. Definitely. That's that's my plea 
to Agreed. Dave and John <clears throat> and George. Yeah, you know, since they're listening. To it. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but all right. Uh, we've got all a right. huge, huge uh, resolution coming Big. in the next episode. Uh, Big I, episode next week. Yeah. If we can take what they've done so far as a sign for what's mm-hmm. coming, like I, I, I'm thrilled to see what they'll do. Um, this has yeah. been a really and fun And I'm a little ride, nervous. I, I, f- and, I feel like it's going to have yeah. quite a cliffhanger is my guess. The stakes are high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, well, and, and the, you know, yeah. Dave's he's got a movie that he's going to be making uh, about somewhere in this era, I think. So it may just be the continuation of the mm-hmm. series for all we know. I, I don't know. Um, Could be. So like, I know they've, yeah. they've talked a lot about how like the end of this will probably set up, you know, some more movies to come. So that'll be mm-hmm. exciting. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if you stuck with us uh, throughout this, I uh, really appreciate it. Um, but uh, yep. I'm Nate. All our fans. <laughs> and I'm Rach. <laughs> this has been Pew Pew Time. And that's another, pew, another pew. ending nailed perfectly. Got it. Good to see you.